Mr. Rocco? Yes, ma'am, please. All right, good afternoon. Mr. Brennan? Present. Mr. Rickman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Here. Mr. Vine? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Uh, present. Uh, Reverend McDowell, would you bless us for the word? Yes. Lord, for all that you've done for us today, for all of the gracious and hopeful possibilities you've allowed us to share in. Lord, we pray for your continued mercy, grace, strength. We pray, Lord, that you, you would surround us with your care and with your love. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Um, that's the manager. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, at this time, we would ask council to adopt the agenda as outlined. You have um, two action items, an emergency ordinance and a resolution. All right, it's a motion. So move, move we adopt the, the um, agenda. All right, Is second. Second. Uh, Moving second discussion uh, with the previous question, Clark Colorado. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank no, you. Me. The first item is ordinance number 2020 uh, 2020-044. <laughs> an emergency ordinance extending the temporary suspension of operating procedures of city council meetings and city boards and commissions meetings. See a motion. So move. A second. Second. All right, discussion with the previous question, clerk call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Byron? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you, Council. And the resolution is listed as resolution number 2020059, City of Columbia Policy Statement on Social Distancing. Mr. Mayor, did you want to offer any comments at this time? Sure, and, and, and invite my colleagues to say some as well. We've had a chance to speak individually um, uh, about this resolution. And it, it, it's, it's at its core and um, uh, a clear statement on behalf of the, the city and, and, our, and our leaders recognizing uh, the, the, the two issues that we have been clear to Americans um, and maybe people around the globe for quite some time, because that we're dealing with a, a generational uh, threat uh, as it relates to the pandemic. Uh, and we've not seen um, a deceleration of cases uh, here in the Midlands or in, in America right now. At the very same time, the realities that that um, um, that uh, mandated social distancing uh, is, it can be economically ruinous. So you know, so we 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 have this unstoppable force that, that's hidden in, in an immovable object, and and trying to find ways uh, to to make it clear to our citizens, or through our deed and our words, uh, that, that we're sympathetic uh, to the challenges that our businesses are, are are facing, and many of our businesses will be faced with the prospect of, uh, of opening even when, when they may not feel totally comfortable. Uh, we remain committed to the idea that as much as we can do to set the stage uh, for people to safely re-enter um, uh, society, safely uh, shop, safely shop local, safely engage in commerce here, then we should be doing it. This is a broad statement. The first, that we, um, that we support uh, the continuing of, of social distancing and that as we re-enter society, we need to make sure that we do it responsibly uh, and that we give our businesses some guidance, uh, not that aren't just um, uh, contained in the 17 pages of the CDC uh, guidelines, which uh, I believe have, have great merit, uh, but, but there, are, there are specific bullet points that lay out uh, some things that we believe that every business of any size should be uh, engaged in. Uh, to um, uh, to uh, reopen, and we're going to spend some time. Uh, we have our, our task force on business reopening uh, re meeting again tomorrow. Over the course of the next week, hammering out some very specific guidance to some folks who rely uh, very much so um, for our advice and counsel. Uh, I will 
update it. Um, uh, this is part of a, a, a still a very comprehensive effort. Uh, Teresa, I want to say that um, uh, the staff has done an excellent job, uh, an excellent, an excellent job in, in standing up and standing in the gap for our, our, our businesses and our citizens at this time. We've got to yeah, continue doing that. I do believe that the uh, profile in the, in the Post and Courier this week of your leadership is also representative of the over 2,000 um, members of our team uh, who every day step up to serve the people of, of, of Columbia. So um, let's keep encouraging social distancing. Let's uh, be at the forefront of encouraging uh, a return to, to the new normal as we ease our way in. And, and, and I'll also say that I think some of the recommendations that have come out of Accelerate SC have been also good and, and very helpful. I got an update from um, Howard from the Municipal Association this morning on, on some of the recommendations that have, that have been made. I asked for a written uh, version of it. Um, and I'll make sure that we, we share that broadly as soon as we get it in hand. Uh, some of the recommendations made on behalf of cities uh, have all been adopted. Now we have to make sure that, they, um, that they're also implemented uh, with the legislature, um, uh, uh, legislature, uh, legislature support. Um, but this um, particular uh, resolution is, is, again, just underscoring uh, how important we feel that it is uh, that we continue to engage in social distancing uh, until we see a true deceleration of cases. And, and then that's the time to start aggressively, um, but thoughtfully um, re re reducing our social distancing allies. Um, so uh, that's what it's about. All right. All right, and um, I, I would encourage everyone again. It's not. It's we will publicly notice the meeting uh, as we as we have um, already. But tomorrow we'll, we will have our our next task force meeting on business reopenings. Uh, we will break down into committees, have a more focused effort to articulate uh, some plans on on a number of different fronts, and um, hopefully everyone will will be there and will participate as we did uh, last week. Yes, sir, Mr. Duval. Uh, Mr. Mayor, is this the uh, third or fourth meeting of the task force on business reopening? This is the second, sir. This second, the, okay. Sir. Yeah, um, we've had, of course, our, our, our coronavirus, Midlands Coronavirus Task Force meeting, and then we had the one of disparities. Uh, and I would say we've had some really good interactions with um, just this week alone, uh, the university, uh, DHEC, Prisma, USC, uh, Providence, Lexington Medical. So just really thinking about the work we can do more comprehensively to uh, have everyone going in the same direction. This is one of the rare opportunities where, where two plus two can't actually equal five if we're, if, we're, if, we're, if we're coordinating our activities in a way to benefit the collective. A lot of folks want to do some good right now. And I think as, at least as it relates to the people here in, in, in Columbia and the Midlands, we can, we can play an outsized role in helping uh, direct resources um, uh, in a structured way, uh, in, in a, and I think uh, in a way that that's that's actually usable and tangible. Um, but but that was that was a set, this would be the second meeting, Howard, and the goal would be maybe to have another meeting next Friday. But in the interim, some of the committees we established um, also meeting um, to make some recommendations to the larger group, and then those that require policy implementation or action by city council, um, uh, giving us uh, guidance. Okay. Um, and I move approval, and uh, the, the second we can have some more discussion. I move approval. I'll second. I'll second. Right. Any discussion? Ms. Devine. Um, I would just say that, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for a lot of folks is um, the mixed messages, uh, you know, told to, you know, open up, um, but then, um, you know, but there's no clear direction on, although we're opening up, we're trying to ease back into it. There's still a threat out there. We need to continue to follow guidelines. And, and so I think that this council has continued to be a leader um, in everything that we're, we've been doing to try and address this unprecedented um, situation we're all in. And I think that at least this resolution makes it clear that, you know, although lots of businesses will be opening up, people will be transitioning back to work environments that doesn't mean you have to that you go back to normal um so I, I strongly encourage or I strongly support this resolution I will say and I share it with the mayor you know one of the biggest concerns that I have is that you know lots of folks are saying they don't want government to to tell you what to do but absent some kind of guidance people are 
uh, making decisions that are putting themselves and others in harm's way. Um, and particularly we've got workers who are expected to go back to work because things are opening back up. But you know, you don't always have a whole lot of guidance on how do you open up safely. I will say I commend our businesses because I know that there are a lot of businesses who have needed to open up and have uh, been open, but have also um, implemented themselves a lot of safeguards to try and make sure not only their customers are safe, but their staff and everyone else. And so I think that this being able to enumerate the CDC guidelines and our, our, and our resolution and be able to widely uh, share that at least businesses and consumers will have something to look at um, as far as how do we, we transition back to some sense of normal, but also making sure that we have some guidance on what to do. Um, what I would say for us, I think that we need to constantly monitor the situation and where we can give guidance, where we can, where we need to implement some policies, um, or even just, you know, give support as we, we transition back out. I think we need to, that's going to be a moving target, um, you know, this week in, in five points, there's been a lot of um, angst about, you know, wanting to open up, but even some business owners who have felt like, you um, based on the, the behavior of the patrons um, and maybe some people not understanding, they can't be open and be safe. And so what we can do to continue to, you know, educate the public about what needs to happen, but also support our businesses on how to enforce things and get things in place. I think, um, you know, that would be good for us to continue to lead in this area. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Rickman. I, I want to piggyback on what Tamika was saying, which, you know, I think that there has to be some guidance and people are helping. And, you know, we've seen a little bit of overwhelming, you know, unfortunately, Five Points was um, places were a little overwhelmed with people wanting to get out and became the poster. But at the same time, we need to make sure that as we put these guidelines in, you know, we have the exact same situation at the Sumter Street Transfer Station with all the people waiting on the bus. And, you know, the Comet got $15 million to help combat it, and they need to make sure that they're doing the same guidelines. And so as we move forward, I think we need to make sure that we're getting this to everybody so that we're, it's equally being, it doesn't help if we're pushing towards one segment, you know, um, I, you know, I had to go to Walmart the other day and they've got the gate and thing, but nobody was counting how many people are coming in. And so I think these guidelines will help because we still need to uh, um, try to help businesses open, but at the same time do it safely. And some businesses aren't ready to open, some are. And so I think it's gonna be a gradual. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. I think we saw a little boost of people who just got painted out. Um, the businesses inside their fences or patios were doing the right thing, uh, um, which was a good thing. And I think we've gotten positive reports from from all of our, our staff. And I think, you know, the chief, both chiefs have done an incredible job. I've seen our folks everywhere trying to help and address and help people kind of get slowly engaged. But, you know, I do agree we need, I think we need to have some type of guidelines. And I think the, the, the conversation we had last Friday, and I think the ongoing is gonna be helpful because I think some people are gonna need help with tools and what's available. Um, you know, how do we deal with the sidewalk situations? How do we get people on board? And, you know, I know that a couple of businesses are reaching out and trying to get in touch with some, there's some new programs where people can sign up for times to come so you don't suddenly have this on thrust of people out there. But I think generally our businesses and our, our folks have, have done a pretty good job. I mean, there's issues here and there as we see in our weekly reports, but you know, I think, I think we're on the right track. It's just, it's going to take a little bit longer and I don't, I don't think it's going to happen in a week and I hope people don't expect it to happen in a week. Uh, Mayor. Um, yeah, please, Mr. Davis. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be repetitive with Tamika and um, Daniel, but uh, I, I think um, one of the things that I, I believe is happening, but and maybe through the, hopefully through the resolution, we are gonna again sort of separate ourselves um, locally in terms of stepping forward to do what we can to clear up some of the 
uh, I think confusion or misunderstanding of who's in charge, who's not, who or who who or supersedes uh, the other. Um, and I'm hoping that um, the business groups can also um, they're doing it, but would continue to uh, do what they can to I think understand and be supportive of what we're trying to do and uh, help us with any other form of guidance that we might be able to put out there to make our intentions clear and uh, also show that we're supportive of what what they want to do and in some cases what they need to do in order to uh, be back up at full speed. You know, you know. Um, well, I, I will say this too, um, again, uh, our eye on the clock, I know we're on a tight time frame here today. I do want to really say thank you to um, uh, our staff, um, um, Chief Holbrook and, and Chief uh, Jenkins and their team. Uh, you know, the you know, picture does say, speak a thousand words, and obviously uh, we know how easily transmissible this virus is. So even a moment or two, uh, uh, is, is something we want to keep our eyes on, but that picture of Jake's has become kind of iconic. The reality is, is that our folks responded uh, fairly, fairly quickly, just as they have with a number of different businesses and found that inside Jake's, uh, um, that they were actually um, quite in compliance uh, with it. But the, but the issue that Daniel raised about, about how we help all of our businesses, and this is going to be important mm -hmm. as we transition into this new era of digital, digital leadership and, and, and uh, as it relates to restaurants or it relates to uh, even hair, you know, um, uh, um, barbers and beauty salons, uh, the role that we can probably play in, in helping a number of different businesses transition into the new age where scheduling software might help them um, still do what they've always done, but very differently and, and uh, hopefully get to a point where their businesses are viable. You know, we've, we've for years, um, uh, done great work with, with businesses, the next level and fast track and, and others. But this is going to re really um, encourage a seismic shift in the way businesses operate. And, and, and we need to make sure that we continue to be that fount of, of ideas and creativity and access to technology that businesses will need uh, to, uh, to move forward into, the, uh, into this, new, um, this new era. Um, so uh, uh, again, um, our, our officers and fire marshals are out uh, working uh, diligently uh, they've been um, issuing warnings. Uh, there have been no businesses fined as of yet, uh, which is which is a, a good sign. Everyone's being compliant and complicit. We've gotten some good feedback uh, from uh, businesses who are actually quite thankful to be visited and uh, uh, and and see that um, that that their common concerns as ours are, are being met. That they want to obviously engage in commerce, but they want to do it responsibly. So I want to want to thank uh, our, our law enforcement folks uh, as they seek to enforce the government's executive order. Uh, for the work they continue to do and um and thank you all I, I i do agree i think we've been out front let's stay out front but let's be a, let's be in the solutions business and the ideas business and, and putting more uh things forward that 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 help people realize that protecting public health and being pro-business are not mutually exclusive they are together and, and we can do it if we're leaving from the front in columbia uh we'll move the previous question clerk call roll mr brennan yes mr rickman Aye. Mr. McDowell? I see his mouth moving. Ah, you still on mute, Ed. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Duval? Yes. Aye. Mr. Vine? Yeah, we have a meeting, of course, some of what we Aye. Uh, 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 now you need to go on mute, Ed. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys give me life. You give me life. All right. Um, and that and actually, I mean, I think we're we I might have covered two and three at the same time there. Uh, yeah. Teresa, is there anything um, I'm, I'm missing uh, uh, there? No, sir. Not that I know of. Um, just keeping it fluid and we'll update after the task force meets and gives more specific um, guidance along with our staff for those um, 
business related measures. Uh, thank you. Um, any public comments, Erica? No, sir. No emails or even voicemails have been received regarding today's agenda. All right. um, so before we, we go into executive session, just a very, very brief comment, uh, comments, y'all. Uh, you know, we, we're all doing so much. Uh, we're, we're all engaged in, in, in living our lives and, and, and taking care of those that we love, our real jobs of uh, providing for our families and, and uh, also providing for the community that we've sworn to protect. I really want to thank um, all of you uh, for, for the work that we do. I think we, we, we always have that, that, that strong and good positive tension that you have to have to really make sure you're seeing all sides of an issue uh, to uh, address the, the needs of a, of a diverse community very comprehensively. Uh, uh, it's been on my spirit. The, the last several days, as I know, this from my personal conversations with so many of you, uh, that um, as we deal with the realities of of, uh, of a global pandemic, that we continue to keep our eyes on the prize of, of, of just what it means to live in what I still believe to be the greatest nation in the history of the world, and not lose touch with um, uh, our humanity. We have, uh, in the last uh, week, uh, lost a number of Columbia, uh, and, and just three I, I want to kind of elevate right now. I'm going to be fast uh, before I get too missed. Um, obviously, the, the loss of, of young knowledge since uh, uh, the, the, the violence that still continues to um, rage across this country and, and in our respect, uh, this uh, community is something um, that should never be tolerated. Uh, and when it costs a child uh, his life, a child uh, with a life full of promise, it, um, it, um, it should call each and every one of us uh, to action and continue doing the things that we're doing. I'm thankful for the leadership of our police department and, and, and others as they uh, investigate. And I know they'll bring the perpetrators of this crime uh, to justice, but it is the responsibility of an entire community to, tr to, con to continue to keep a community safe. And I, I want to encourage uh, all of us and, and those people who are listening to us right now to continue to use our voices to elevate the reality uh, of violence and, and, and gun violence in, in America to pray for knowledge is family and sister and, and, and the entire community. Uh, we lost um, uh, my friend. It's, it's odd for a 50 year old man uh, to say he has a 12 year old friend. Uh, uh, but uh, many of you may remember, regardless of where we were on, on the Bull Street issue or on, on, on a, on baseball, uh, the the star, the bell of the ball, uh, was a little Maggie Brunson. Uh, Ma Maggie uh, is uh, um, uh, she she showed up. She 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 testified at the public hearing uh, back in 2013 and uh, and shared her, her hopes that Bull Street would have a playground, would have a playground uh, uh, for for children. Uh, and uh, there were a number of voices heard over the course of of that. Uh, 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 rigorous debate that we had as a, as a, as a community. Um, there was no voice louder uh, and more significant, I believe, in helping winning uh, the, the 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 kind of hearts and minds of people in the room than young um, young Maggie. She she suffered from Wim syndrome and a number of other um, uh, ailments as a result uh, of it, and uh, went in for surgery this this weekend and, and uh, suffered a stroke and uh, lost her battle on on Tuesday at age 12 uh, and. Uh, um, we will miss her. Uh, she is a representative of a number of our our, our citizens, our children, um, uh, people of all ages that suffer from a number of medical ailments. And I think it's important that, particularly as we think about how we manage through this pandemic, that we, that we continue to keep our eyes on the least among us, and we, and we continue to uh, to advocate, to vocally and aggressively advocate for the vulnerable. Uh, that's our job. Uh, that's our job. We a lot of us can take care of ourselves. A lot of us need us to help take care of them. Um, Maggie uh, was my was my little superhero, as, a, as I told her um, in the video and sent I sent to her. And 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 I know we we we've lost so many others um, uh, in recent memory, but I do want to elevate one more name and, uh, and thank you all for the uh, the moment. But um, uh, Thelma Brooks Salmon, uh, we lost uh, Mrs. Salmon. Who, as many of you know, uh, was was a titan in this community for so many years. She and uh, Commissioner Jasper Salmon 
were married for 66 years uh, as, as they, as they mm -hmm. uh, got married on the day they graduated from Benedict College. And she spent the better part of seven decades uh, serving uh, this community. Uh, she is representative, she's a breast cancer survivor, representative of people who never ever got a lottery to continue to give and give and give uh, to, to this community over uh, the course of her life. And, and that spirit of service is extended not beyond her and Commissioner Salmon, but to their, their, their children, their children's children. And it's a, um, uh, they've left an out, she's left an outsized mark on, on, on Columbia and she is representative of, of their best of us. Um, let's, let's remember that as we get caught up in these statistics and, 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 and data and, and these global issues uh, that we continue to, re to remind ourselves why we do what we do, not what we do, but why we do what we do. It, it's, for, it's for people like Knowledge and, and Maggie and, and Ms. Salmon. And uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm thankful. Uh, in these moments, we all get a lot of time to think and talk. I'm thankful uh, for, for each and every one of you and the work that you do, empowering our staff to go out to do the work to do every single day. Um, God bless you. And, um, and unless someone else says something else to, to, to say, um, Mr. Duval, would you please make a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move we go into executive session for receipt of legal advice related to matters covered by attorney-client privilege pursuant to SE Code 30-4-70A2, legal advice pertaining to COVID-19 and city operations. Is there a second? Second. Um, I did see your hand, Davis. Did you want to... Sam, did you have a word? Did you want to say something before? Um, no, I'll, 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 I'll say it later. I, I was just going to add to the- um... Please, please go ahead. Please. Your list of soldiers that we've that we're going to miss in the community, but please, um, okay. I'll do it later. No, I'm please sorry. do it now. Please do it now. Please. No, do it I now. just wanted to say that we also uh, lost Leon Finkman from the uh, oh, absolutely North Main Pharmacy, and very unique because he was a pioneer in uh, the pharmacy industry uh, as far as African Americans con was concerned, and also. Um, he, he took the chance of bringing his business to the North Main Corridor, and um, he, he'll be missed. And um, I, it's, it's funny, though, that we're, we're talking about some of the folks um, that have really made contributions to, to where we are now. And uh, I think also they've been instrumental in passing on the encouragement, the knowledge, and, and assistance to the folks who are really going to be playing a role as we come out of this uh, quagmire that we're in now. So uh, they all contributed to, to our success. And um, I think they planted some seeds that are gonna um, help us um, be bigger and better than we are now. Amen. And uh, we have, we did issue a, um, a, a, a proclamation in honor of Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Finkel's, uh life and uh, in there, I did I did reference that he was um, a member of the charter line of the Zeta Epsilon chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi, the greatest fraternity <laughs> in the world. Uh, yeah. I, I, I make sure you and, and Ms. McDowell um, did, that you I'm sign. Not going, I'm not going to I, call. I understand you need to um, try to get it up today, but but apparently you worked it out. So oh, yeah, it was well this, deserved. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Um, thank you all. Um, uh, what was the previous question? For Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Ron? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Make sure that you look out for one another. Make sure We're good to go. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Good to go. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to ask for a, a, a motion uh, to um, clearly state that well, we, we, we've been very thoughtful and judicious in how we've appropriated uh, the fund set aside for the Small Business Stabilization Fund and our other projects around Resilient Columbia. We held on to $100,000 uh, uh, for a portion of that to be used to complement with other existing testing capacity we have with our relationship uh, with Precision Genetics to try and help our businesses again, adjust to creating a, a safe environment as they transition 
uh, back into uh, going, uh, doing business and commerce when they see fit. We wanna make sure that we help uh, support them. Uh, the, the proposal is for uh, each small business uh, to be uh, allowed to test up to 10 employees, um, give our staff the flexibility that they need to work out exactly how we do it. If it's under our current arrangement that tests employees or if we need to expand that. Uh, the uh, with a uh, obviously with a, a clear statement as um, as reflected in the in the resolution that we passed earlier that we want to strongly encourage people to continue engaging in, in social distancing and recognizing that even a negative test does not indicate that you that you that um, that you're immune from um, from this incredible challenge. We want to make sure we underscore that uh, that we give priority uh, to um, uh, uh, structure this in a way that might allow for reimbursability. Uh, from the federal government, uh, if in fact um, uh, the, the, the fourth uh, bill passes in, in, in Congress or even under the existing CARES Act uh, provisions, but that this is a priority, that if in fact we're going to create the conditions for um, uh, economic sustainability going forward, that we provide this testing uh, for small businesses. Uh, um, and I want to get that on the record uh, for, for, for council. That is a motion. May I have a second? I second. Uh, with the previous question, Kirk Harlow. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, thank you, Teresa. I look yes, forward sir. to be on, on on Tuesday and hopefully we'll have a, a number of different updates uh, to, to follow up on uh, yeah. then. If you have nothing else, do you have something else? I'm sorry. Please. I was just going to say, I think your motion captured it, Mayor, that the staff and I will have the flexibility to make sure these funds are used for the small businesses, as you yeah. said, the guidelines we've been yeah. utilizing. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. A second. Uh, move, move previous court call roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Now that means we're through for the day, right?